everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm participating in a Cute as a Button Hop. Um, it is featuring digital images from Cute as a Button Stamps and Designs. There is also a giveaway, um, so make sure you check the description box below. And it's open internationally. There is a, an entire week to enter, and everything will be in the description box. Uh, it's a raffle copter. Um, giveaway. So what I was showing you was the image that I chose, which is um, Kissing Booth, and they have tons of images in their shop. I actually have an elephant image that I'm using for another project, and I showed you that. One nice thing about digital images is you can pick the size that you want to have them as. I could have made this image as big as an A2 card or a 5x7 card, or I don't I don't know if that's an A7 card. I think it is. Uh, I also could have stretched it really tall and put it on a slimline card, which would have been kind of cool, I think. Uh, but I'm not quite ready to jump into slimline cards. Uh, but I'm showing you the coloring here, and I do have the colors listed across the screen as I change them. Um, just very simple coloring. I um, absolutely love this image, and... Um, it was super easy to color. The um, color combinations that I picked came from the paper pad that I chose, which was a Doodle Bug Fun in the Sun paper pad. I have no idea why I decided to use this piece of paper, but I just kind of, well, I guess I have an idea. It looks like a bunch of banners, like if I was at a festival. And I thought, where else would you have a kissing booth but like at a school festival or, um, you know, some kind of church festival or something. I don't know if those are everywhere, but here we have like church festivals. They pop up in the summertime and they have all sorts of fun things that uh, you and your family and your kids can do. Sometimes there's rides and uh, snacks. There's a Greek festival here and their donuts. People line up for those fancy donuts. Like they line up on the street and everything. They're good. <laughs> Um, but I thought of that kind of a situation with this cute little kissing booth. Um, I thought that, that this would have to be at some kind of festival. So I found this piece of paper that I just absolutely adored. So all of the colors that I'm using, I pulled from the pattern paper. That is my, um, that is my inspiration. And I, well, spoiler alert, I love this image and how the card eventually turned out. And, but I will tell you that this card was a collaboration, not just with cute as a button as the digital images, which I, I would say, you know, go to the shop and check them out. Uh, there is a giveaway, so, you know, maybe you could win something, um, but the images are. So back to this being a collaboration. You see, sometimes when I'm making a card, I get stuck, and I don't know how you are, but as a crafter uh, and card maker, sometimes I don't have all the inspiration that I'm hoping for. Um, so sometimes I reach out to my super crafty friends and I ask them questions and I get their opinions and they, they give them to me honestly, which I absolutely appreciate. And um, a lot of times I'll incorporate their suggestions into my cards and this was one of those times. This image is adorable and I love it. And I think it was super fun to color. And I like the pattern paper that I chose. But what happened is later on in the card, when I thought I was done, it didn't look finished. And um, I like to keep things pretty simple and kind of clean when I make cards and this time I pulled out some things that I normally don't use and I'm going to assume that that is why I struggled to finish this card on my own. Uh, in the end the card turned out super cute but not without asking for help and I just want to push the fact that you don't always have to have the answers yourself uh, in life, in card making, in parenting, in a marriage, in, in everything, you can always ask somebody for help. There's always somebody that um, can either give you their opinion or can just listen to you ask questions. Sometimes you just need that. But this time I needed advice. So there were three people in, in particular that I 
really reached out to when I was working on this card. One is uh, Marie over, um, she's got a blog, it's called Another Card Making Blog, which, and it's got like a question mark, like, oh my gosh, there's another one of those. But she's been blogging for approximately five years, I think, or better, maybe 11 years. Yeah, I think it's been like 11 years. And she makes beautiful things. And um, so I had asked her her opinion and she gave me her opinion. And then I asked Amanda from Rise and Procrastinate because she's my buddy. If you've been following me any length of time, you know that she and I are bodies. And I really value her opinion. And uh, she gave it to me and I did incorporate some of her stuff. And the other was my friend Beth. And you'll hear me talk about her when I pull out certain color combinations. She has been the total inspiration for my R80 uh, series combination. I absolutely love that pink red combination but that came from her. Anyway, I was texting her and I was like, Beth, this card need something. I don't know what it needs. Anyway, you'll see the point where all of this goes down. And um, in the meantime, I do have all my coloring with all of the combos. This particular color here is um, kind of my go-to blonde combination when I want things to be to look blonde. Now, before I put in the rest of the color, this actually does look a little red, and you could use it as a, like a red hair color. It's Y21, Y23, YR23, and Y27. Now the 20, the Y21 and the Y23 are pretty close. One is just a little bit warmer. Um, but here, once I put this combination on her hair, this is my red hair combination. Um, his hair looks much more blonde at this point once I start to put in her color. Now I wanted to make sure that she had an undertone of like golden yellow. So that's why I started with the Y26. It's kind of a dull gold color. Um, added YR23 to deepen up the uh, shadows. And then YR27 is basically the darkest, well it is the darkest color I used in his hair, uh, but it is a mid-tone color that I'm using here. And then I brought out the E07. Now this changes her hair color to a beautiful red. And I have a couple of very good redheaded friends and they are amazing people. And I just, when I seen this image, I thought, she rep she looked like one of my friends completely, so I wanted to really do her justice and add a little bit of red. Now you can see where I bring them golden tones back in. It just makes that hair color look more realistic and not like red. Um, I do like that that E07 has that red tone, but it's it's not red. So for her dress, I brought in another different combination. Um, the R43 is a red. It's a pink color. It's not a fuchsia color. It's not a magenta color. It's it's a light red. And I just thought that it mixed well with this combination. It definitely goes well with that RV25. Now when I pulled my colors, I did use the Sandy Allnock hex chart and I use that often. I do reference it quite a bit, but I also have a chart from Copic uh, that has the like markers in order and I also have an app on my phone that I sometimes just use for inspiration. I love mixing odd combinations to create the colors that I want and that's one really nice thing with Copics is I'm pretty sure you can almost blend anything but you can layer everything. Uh, the only thing that I think that would cause you trouble is if you decided to layer black the, the 100 or the 110 over something. I think he would just get black. So for his white shoes, uh, I did add just a little bit of shading. You can't see her shoes, so I lucked out there. And then um, for the little bits of her dress, I did go back to that same BG combination I used for his sweatshirt, except for I kept out the darkest color. I wanted these two to coordinate, but I didn't want it to scream in your face that they coordinated, because uh, it looks like maybe they're not a couple. He looks a little shocked that she may be kissing him. And um, 
doesn't it look like, have you ever seen the movie Revenge of the Nerds when they had the, the kissing booth or the pie eating booth? Or This kind of reminds me of that too, like church festivals and Revenge of the Nerds. <laughs> um, and then I did grab that um, R43 marker and just go back over the heart and the lips just to add a little more pink to um, like somebody had stained it over. So then I pulled out my Simon Says Stamp Tiny Words because this uh, digital image does not have a sentiment. So I thought, well, I needed something, but I didn't want to take away from the image itself. I wanted just something little. So my first thought here was to add those little banners underneath my image panel. Uh, I did add a piece of ribbon. So there is one of the things that I normally don't use is ribbon and um, I thought that it was great texture. Uh, when I was stamping the little tiny sentiment, I I stamped it out twice because I didn't get a good impression the first time. And I just used my Simon Says Stamp um, sentiment strips to trim that out and uh, into a super, super tiny little strip. And then uh, I just layered everything. I did lose some footage on this card, but I don't feel like the video is uh, missing it at all. You see that I used that wood grain embossing folder on that orange background, and um, I die cut that lawn fawn lacy border from some pattern paper and then also from some black and offset that just a little bit so that it adds a little bit of a shadow. And then there I dropped my glued up panel. I had to clean that up before I had a mess. See how you can see that black along the border just adds a little bit and um, it brings that black that I matted my panel in all the way around the image. And then I put the little love you there. And then I brought in the pink and main. Uh, these are the glossy dots or something. The enamel, glossy enamel dots. They came in a pink and main card kit. And I love that they're doing that now. And these ones with the hearts are super adorable. And I thought they were perfect for this image. And um, I do not poke myself with that pokey tool, but I'm pretty sure I thought I was going to. <laughs> I need to figure out a better way to get those off of that paper or plastic. Uh, but I've added a few of these on here because at this point I thought I was pretty much done with this card. Um, but to me, it really looks unbalanced. It's so top heavy. There is nothing in the bottom, and even though I weighted the bottom corner of this image down with that little tiny black sentiment strip, it's still not weighted enough. Um, so I attached this to a black panel, hoping that that would kind of balance it for my eye, which it still didn't. Uh, I'm still struggling here. I tried to add a little more bulk down at the bottom and I thought while I was texting people because I had taken a couple of pictures and I had sent them off to some of my buddies remember Beth Marie and Amanda and while I was waiting for them to help me out because I was really stuck I was happy with my coloring I was happy with my paper choices but I was not happy with my card and I want to be happy with my card. So I went on to finish the inside and uh, if you've been following me at all, you know that that is part of my New Year's resolution is to complete the insides of my cards, even with just a little stamp, stamp uh, because Amanda does and she was my inspiration for that. So here I attached this card panel to a card base and waited for my replies from my friends. So you can see that it's cute, but it is just not finished. So I thought while I was waiting, I would um, try this little border. So I pulled out my scrap piece of Nina and I die cut this with the Avery L. It's the picket fence set of dies, but it's the grass border. And then um, I just colored it with my YG17, my favorite Copic marker, not my favorite color, favorite Copic marker. And uh, it matches this background paper so well. Um, so I just trimmed this and then I sent a picture off to my friend Beth and I said, what do you think about this grass? And she said, glue it down. <laughs> Actually, I think she said, yes, yes, yes. So I glued this little strip of grass in here and it kind of uh, grounded my image. Although I had the ribbon there, it just, it just didn't seem to ground the image. And then we decided that I needed a little black sentiment or something down in the bottom corner because the eye does not 
the, my eye did not move around the card well and she agreed, Beth agreed, that it did not seem balanced. And Amanda and Marie were both messaging me at the same time, telling me, you know, it's nice, the card is beautiful, but every time I would add something, they would be like, yep, I can see why you added that. So um, then I needed to put this on straight because what you didn't see is I put it down and then had to tear it back up because it was not straight. <laughs> and then I thought we needed a couple more of these little enamel dots at the bottom. I had those three little banners and I figured three little enamel hearts, but then I was trying to figure out where I was going to put this little heart and it just didn't seem like it needed to be over there. Once I stuck it by the banners, I felt like it was a great spot for it. So um, one of the things you did not see me color was the background. Um, and I also trimmed the image panel down a little bit because when I cut it out, I had too much of an offset. Uh, so I did hand trim it. Um, in the background, uh, I added this guy. I just thought that it finished the card off super nice. Anyway, uh, check the description box below. Uh, I will have the links for that giveaway. And check out Cute as a Button. Um, their stamps are super adorable. And I appreciate you stopping by. I would love to chat with you in the comments. And I would love it if you would like and subscribe. And as always, uh, give cards generously. Bye.